Hello everybody and welcome back to Eckerd's Garden Center. Well, I can tell you that garden centers across the entire nation have just been bustling over the past couple of months. We know why, it doesn't need to, to be spoken, but it has been great to kind of unify people and to show the beauty of plants to all sorts of gardeners all across the entire world. Uh, what I have noticed is that there are two different types of, of shoppers when it comes to the garden center. Those who will ask every single question that they can think of, and also those who won't ask any. And you can tell which is which because the ones who walk in, they immediately look around like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. So this video today is made for those people who don't know where to start. This is all about decoding the mystery of plant labels. So before we begin, what I want you to do as a gardener at home, before you pick out any plants whatsoever, I want you to look at your area. Decide where you're going to put these plants. Are they going to be in a container? Are they going to be in the ground? Is it a sunny location? Is it a shady location? Does it get a lot of water? Does it get a little? And then the next thing I want you to do is use whatever search engine online you prefer and type in those demands. I want to know what plants look best in full sun which ones prefer full shade, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to get tons of different plants. And from there, you can actually start to make decisions on what you like just from those suggestions. That way you're not overwhelmed when you come into the store with what's already available. You kind of have an idea of what you're looking for. There are a lot of plants out there and you're not always going to find everything that's on your list, but it's at least a good place to start. So now that we've gotten that out of the way and cleared the air, I wanna show you some of these different types of plant labels. We're gonna start over here with some of the annuals. Now, for those of you who are new to this and don't know what annuals are, annuals are the plants that need to be replaced every single year. They complete their life cycle in a single year, so they're going to die in the winter and they're not going to come back. So, we're going to start off with some of these tags here. Now, as you can see, all three of these tags that I'm going to show you are completely different. So not all tags are created equally. Some of them have a lot of information and some of them only have a little bit. And that's okay. Sometimes you don't need a lot of information to make your decisions. The first one I'm going to show you right here is one of the simple ones. You can see at the top that the plant we have is called a marigold. And they've basically supplied the most common name so that people will identify it based on that name. Every plant has at least two names, typically a common name and also a scientific name but in this case they didn't feel the need to put the uh, scientific name because everybody tends to respond to marigold and know what plant we're looking for the information that's on this tag you can see there's a little sun icon up here and this is a, a completely open looking sun there's no blockage over it so that would mean that this plant wants full blasting sun and you can even read it if you can see that tiny little lettering there they do tell you that in a slight description right below and they also say that this is an annual uh, there is a little bit more information when you're selecting plants the things that you want to look for most are how much light does it require what size does it grow to be and how much water everything else is basically just fertilizing and pruning and those can come into play later so you want to look for those things first and usually these tags will tell you about in inches how big or how wide the plant is going to become so in this case the height can be anywhere from 10 to 36 inches for those of you who don't know every 12 inches is a foot so you can assume that this can get up to about three feet uh, and also wide it's going to be only 16 so it's much more of an upright plant as opposed to a bushy plant um, when it comes to watering, it only needs medium, so it doesn't need to be heavily saturated all the time. And if you do fertilize your plants, this one only needs it once a month. So that's one of the simple tags. If you want more information, there is a website called bloomiq.com. And if you just type that in, that'll give you all sorts of information on a variety of plants uh, of various types. Now, moving on to some more fancy tags. So these two right here, these tags are kind of similar. This one, this one is a registered trademark variety, Proven Winners. That's a brand of plants. And they basically have curated a whole line of plants that kind of carry the gold medal standard. I don't wanna, I don't wanna make anybody else feel like they're underachieving here. But Proven Winners kind of carries a gold medal standard for plants that have some unique trait that makes them stand out. Maybe they're uh, in colored differently. Maybe they, uh, 
Maybe they provide a new fragrance that has never been seen before. All sorts of things. So you can be sure that anything with the proven winner's label on it is a plant that has merit to it. So you can see that there's quite a bit going on with this tag. At the very top, if you can see this, it tells us uh, proven winners. This is the Supertunia. This is the series of plants. If you look down here, it gives us a scientific name. It says it's a Petunia hybrid, but this particular Petunia is a part of their Supertunia line. And this particular one in that line is called Royal Velvet. So now you know, it's a petunia, it's in this particular series of petunia, and this is the name of this particular cultivar. Right up front they tell us that it takes full to part sun, so you know that this plant wants a lot of sun, and 6 to 10 inches tall. They also produce these QR codes so that anybody who has a smartphone, um, I'm not familiar with the Android devices, but with iPhones, all you have to do is turn on your camera and aim it at that QR code, and it'll automatically link you to a website that'll give you even more information. So there's a lot of information just on this front side of the tag on the back side once again we have the same things we have its habit we have its blooms we have its height i'm not going to go through all these because there's a lot but basically if you just go down the line you're going to be looking once again for the height you're going to be looking for the water tolerance and also the light tolerance and then finally we have this tag over here now this one doesn't specify a specific specific brand of plants but what we've got instead of putting it at the bottom like they did on this proven winners tag they put it at the top this is called the cali Bracoa. And instead of putting the line on the top like they did on Proven Winners, they put it on the side. So this is the Cabaret line, and this particular one is called Neon Rose. So Neon Rose is a Calibracoa and a Cabaret line. Once again, they put information on the back. You can also Google Ball Flora Plants for a little bit more, but you're looking for the exact same things, light tolerance, water uh, needs, and height. All right, so that should help to demystify that a little bit. I also wanna show you guys a few things about our herbs. I know I talk about the herbs a lot, but that's because they are so multifaceted. So I love our herb tags because if you look at the front, they've got these cute little icons that instantly tell you kind of what it is that you're looking for. Like this one has a little perfume bottle, it has a butterfly, it has a flower, it has a hummingbird. If you're not sure, I mean, those should pretty much speak for themselves, but if you're not sure, all you have to do is fold it down and it will give you the decoder for those. Basically, it's an aromatic plant. It's a butterfly plant. It's an ornamental plant, and it's a hummingbird plant. So if you're ever unsure what those uh, symbols mean, all you have to do is just flip the tag over, and it'll tell you right there. They also give you the scientific name right there on top. They tell you that this particular plant is a perennial. For those that don't know, perennials are the ones that come back at least one year or more. Uh, this one prefers sun, and it gets to be about 14 inches Hi. The reason that I grabbed some of these other ones is so that I could show you a few other things that they've got. So the fork, knife, and spoon would be culinary. And then this one, I love that this mint gets pretty much everything. It gets the gold medal standard for having all the different things, such as being a, a medicinal plant and being a fragrant plant and being bee friendly, and you can plant it in a pot, etc., etc. You can also see here that we have an example of every single type. So this one says biennial. Ooh, now there's a word we haven't heard before. So parsley is a biennial, which as opposed to an annual or a perennial, this plant will kind of treat itself like an annual. In the first year, it will put out all its foliage. It'll go dormant. It'll come back the second year, but then it's gonna use all that energy from the first year to produce flowers. And then after that, it will have completed its life cycle and it will die. So that's what a biennial means. It's not truly perennial, it's not truly annual, it's somewhere in between. This one right here is an annual. Unfortunately, basil that we all love so much will have to be replaced year after year. And then finally we have mint, which is absolutely a perennial. So now that we've discussed perennial, before we move on to the other perennials, I want to talk about one other element that you need to consider. When it comes to annuals, you can pretty much expect they're going to die. It doesn't matter what you do, they're probably not going to make it through the winter time, whereas perennials should. So when shopping for perennials, there's one more thing you need to consider, and that is their hardiness. So what I have here, this is the official USDA zone map for the hardiness of plants in this region. So what we're looking at, we've got the entire United States, and they have it color code. Over here on this side, they've basically given us number labels so we know where we fall. Uh, we are in the St. Louis area, so we're right over here. And you can see that this sort of light green color corresponds with this section over here. So we are in zone 6, technically B. Most of the time, the labels will just default to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It won't have the A, B, C on there, or the A and the B on there. 
But for us, just to be a little bit more technical, we are in zone 6B. So you can see that means our average coldest temperature gets down to zero or negative five. And so we're going to use that to identify which plants are going to survive in our zone. So the plants that I'm going to show you today are all good in this zone, but you might be shopping in other areas where they're not. So be aware of that. If you're somebody who lives in the St. Louis metro area, you're in zone 6B and you want to look for plants that are hardy through zone 6. It basically gets colder the smaller the number and it gets warmer the, uh, the bigger the number. All right, so starting off right over here as my tags fly all over the place. Um, one of the things that I want to show you is not all these tags are created equally as well. Some of them have little quick icons like what we saw on the herbs, like this, for example, this thrift will both attract butterflies and hummingbirds, whereas some of them have nothing to that effect. But that's okay because oftentimes somewhere in the description, they'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, one of the other things to consider, so when it comes to perennials, you want to know what kind of light tolerance. At the very top of these tags, they have a quick icon. Once again, there's our little sun and it's completely open. So we know that this plant can tolerate full sun. That would be six to eight hours of direct sunlight is full sun or it can take about a half a day sun. So part shade, afternoon shade. Most plants can tolerate the morning sun. It's that late afternoon shade or that late afternoon uh, sun that really scorches them. Over here, we've got the same kind of tolerance on this foxglove. Love sun, love sun. Wants more sun than just shade. So make sure that this plant gets at least six hours. Uh, moving on, we've also got some other plants that don't have as much information. For example, Dianthus, Firestar red. That's all you get. But at least we know the name and we can look it up and we know that it gets eight to ten inches tall. It is a perennial so it will come back year after year but anything more than that we're gonna have to look that up ourselves. And then finally in this last quart pot I grabbed this one because this one is part of the Grow Native line. So when you see this trademark symbol Grow Native you'll know that that does well in this area. They also are exclusively with this purple pot so that makes them stand out even better. Moving on, so I have a shade perennial right back here. So this girl is a fringe bleeding heart and I love her for that feathery fern like foliage that she's got. It's different from your standard common varieties of bleeding heart. And if you look at the tag, here they show you that this plant only wants part shade. It does not want that full blasting sun. So about four to six hours of sun is about all that it can tolerate. If you give it more than that, it'll probably live, but it won't be too happy. So that's how we know that this is more of a shade lover. Same thing with this ostrich fern over here. When you look at the tag, you can see that she only wants about half a day sun and then she wants shade thereafter. Also, this is very useful for those of you who have trouble with deer and rabbits in your landscape. Down here at the bottom on some of these perennials, they have a no deer, no rabbit icon. So you know instantly this plant is good at uh, surviving their carnage. And then finally, the last plant that I want to show you I'm not going to take the tag off because that's going to take too long. So this, once again, we have a proven winners. This is a mountain hydrangea. So you can assume that with trees and shrubs, it's very much the same thing as all the other perennials. You want to make sure that they're in a hardiness zone. Uh, the plant labels are usually two parts. Sometimes they're only single, like you would see with the annuals, but we're looking for the exact same things. Hardiness zones, USDA zones five through nine. We're in six, so we're good to go. This plant only gets to be about two feet tall, which is excellent. Um, we know the bloom time just from looking on here. Here. It should be blooming right about now. Soil and water. It likes moist, well-draining soil and light exposure, sun or part shade. So you know that this particular variety of hydrangea likes sun. Well, folks, I hope that that gives you uh, a little bit more confidence. For those of you who are not uh, good with numbers and you're not very good at measuring, what I'll tell you is that a uh, bottle of Eckert's brand wine is almost exactly one foot. So what could be a be better measuring device than something you can celebrate with afterward? Anyway, guys, that's all for today. We hope this helps you out. And if you have any questions, come see me. I'm Mitch. Thanks for visiting. And until next time, happy planting.